Gymnastics is a sport where athletes do amazing flips and moves, showing off their strength and balance. It's really cool to watch because they can do things that seem impossible, like flying and spinning in the air. But this sport is also tough. It takes a lot from the gymnasts, and sometimes they can get hurt or die if things go wrong. Join us as we delve into the dark side of gymnastics no one talks about, looking into the lives of well-known gymnasts that have been victims of this dark side. We start with Elena Mukina, the epitome of daring, strength, and elegance. Elena Mukina's career story is one of triumph and tragedy. She was a prominent Soviet gymnast, was born on June 1, 1960, in Moscow, Russian SFSR. Tragically, her early childhood was marked by the loss of her parents, who passed away when she was just five years old. Following this devastating loss, Mukina was raised by her grandmother, Anna Ivanovna, who played a pivotal role in her upbringing and support. Mukina's grandmother, Anna Ivanovna, provided a nurturing and caring environment for her granddaughter. She assumed the responsibility of raising Mukina and played an instrumental role in her development as a gymnast. However, the bond between Mukina and her grandmother was once again tested when Anna Ivanovna passed away, creating another heartbreaking chapter in Mukina's life. The loss of her parents and subsequently her beloved grandmother undoubtedly had a profound impact on Mukina's emotional well-being. Despite facing these personal challenges, she found solace and determination within herself, channeling her energy into gymnastics. It was through her dedication and resilience that she emerged as one of the most promising gymnasts of her generation. The story of Elena Mukina's life highlights the resilience and strength she displayed from a young age. Despite experiencing significant personal loss, she found a passion for gymnastics that propelled her towards greatness. Her remarkable journey serves as a testament to the power of perseverance, determination, and the unwavering support of loved ones during difficult times. She began her gymnastics training at a young age, relatively late age of nine, when a coach noticed her potential and encouraged her to pursue the sport seriously. Despite the late start, Mukina's natural talent, combined with her dedication, quickly propelled her into the spotlight of Soviet gymnastics. She quickly demonstrated exceptional talent. In 1998, at the age of 17, she made her mark on the international stage by winning the all-around title at the World Championships in Strasbourg, France. Mukina was known for her innovative and daring routines, pushing the boundaries of gymnastics with her difficult skills. Mukina's early career was marked by her rapid ascent through the ranks of Soviet gymnastics. Under the tutelage of her coach, Mikhail Klimenko, she developed a unique style that combined the balletic grace expected of Soviet gymnasts with an athleticism and daring that was ahead of her time. Her innovative routines, particularly on the floor exercise and uneven bars, showcased her exceptional talent and creativity, setting new standards in the sport. By 1975, Mukina had made significant strides, but it was in 1978 that she truly announced her arrival on the world stage. At the World Championships held in Strasbourg, France, Mukina won the all-around title, defeating established stars and signaling her emergence as one of the world's premier gymnasts. Her performance was characterized by a blend of technical difficulty and artistic expression, earning her a total of five medals, three golds, all-around, floor exercise and balance beam, and two silvers, team competition, and uneven bars. Mukina's success was not solely the result of her natural talent. It was also a product of the intense and often harsh training regimen imposed by the Soviet sports system. The pressure to continuously innovate and perform at the highest level led to a relentless training schedule, which, while contributing to her rapid improvement, also sowed the seeds of her eventual tragedy. Despite her meteoric rise, Mukina faced challenges that hinted at the physical toll the sport was taking on her. Injuries began to plague her, a common issue for gymnasts given the intense physical demands of the sport. However, Mukina's situation was exacerbated by the pressure to maintain her place at the pinnacle of gymnastics, particularly as the 1980 Moscow Olympics approached. Her coaches, particularly her main coach Klemenko, played significant roles in her development, pushing her to attempt increasingly dangerous elements in her routines. 
This drive for innovation and perfection, while contributing to her success, also led to Mukina taking risks that would have dire consequences for her future in the sport. Elena Mukina's early career in gymnastics was a testament to her extraordinary talent, determination, and the innovative spirit she brought to the sport. However, it also reflected the darker aspects of elite athletic competition, where the pressure to excel can sometimes lead to catastrophic outcomes. Her legacy, therefore, is twofold. She remains a symbol of gymnastic brilliance and a cautionary tale about the physical and psychological demands placed on young athletes. Elena Mukina's coach, Mikhail Klimenko, played a pivotal role in her development as a gymnast. Klimenko was known for his rigorous training methods, which, while effective, also contributed to the intense pressure and physical demands placed on Mukina. Under his guidance, Mukina was pushed to incorporate difficult and innovative elements into her routines, aiming to set her apart from her competitors and capitalize on her unique blend of flexibility, strength, and artistic expression. This approach to training, emblematic of the Soviet sports system at the time, prioritized excellence and innovation in pursuit of international success, but often at a high personal cost to the athletes. The type of training Mukina underwent was characteristic of the Soviet gymnastics program during the 1970s, emphasizing was both physically and mentally demanding, requiring athletes to spend many hours each day practicing routines, strength training, and flexibility exercises. The goal was not just to perfect existing elements, but to push the boundaries of what was considered possible in gymnastics at the time. Mukina was practicing a dangerous element known as the Thomas Salto, a tucked one-and-half back somersault with one-and-half twists, on the floor, an element considered risky even by today's standards, when she under-rotated, resulting in a severe spinal injury that left her a quadriplegic. Elena Mukina's career, though tragically cut short, was marked by significant accomplishments. In the 1978 World Championships in Strasbourg, France, Mukina's most notable success came at these championships, where she won the all-around gold medal, showcasing her as the world's top gymnast. She also secured gold in the floor exercise and balance beam, along with silver medals in the team competition and uneven bars. Her performance here solidified her status as a leading figure in the sport. Also, 1977 European Championships, Mukina also made her mark at the European Championships, where she won gold medals, including in the all-around competition. Her success at this event was an early indicator of her potential to dominate on the world stage. In the 1978 World Cup, Mukina's excellence was further demonstrated at the World Cup, where she continued to earn accolades for her performances, particularly in the floor exercise, which had become her signature event due to her innovative choreography and technical skills. These achievements highlighted Mukina's extraordinary talents and her potential to continue as a dominant force in gymnastics. Her ability to perform complex and dangerous elements with grace and precision set new standards in the sport, influencing the development of gymnastics techniques and training methods. However, her career's abrupt end, due to a catastrophic injury in 1979 while preparing for the 1980 Moscow Olympics, casts a shadow over her accomplishments. Just a month before the Moscow Olympics, tragedy struck during one of Mukina's training sessions. While attempting a dangerous move known as the Thomas Salto, a double backward somersault with a full twist on the uneven bars, she misjudged the timing and rotation, resulting in a catastrophic accident. Mukina landed on her chin, fracturing her cervical spine and severing her spinal cord. The injury left her permanently paralyzed from the neck down. Following the accident, Mukina underwent multiple surgeries and received medical treatment in an attempt to improve her condition. She spent several months in the hospital and rehabilitation centers, where she showed remarkable resilience and determination. Despite her paralysis, Mukina remained optimistic and continued to inspire others with her unwavering spirit. Elena Mukina's tragic accident had a profound impact on the gymnastics community worldwide. It sparked a debate about the safety of gymnastic training and the ethical responsibility of coaches and federations to prioritize athletes' well-being over medal pursuits. The incident prompted significant changes in the sport, including the revision of gymnastics' code of points to discourage the execution of excessively dangerous elements. 
You might wonder, how did the Soviet Union react to Elena Mukina's catastrophic injury in 1979, which occurred during a training session just weeks before the 1980 Moscow Olympics? Well, the Soviet Union's reaction to Mukina's injury was complex and, in many ways, reflected the broader dynamics of the sports culture and political environment of the time. Initially, there was a notable lack of transparency regarding the incident. The Soviet sports authorities were slow to release information about the accident and the severity of Mukina's injuries. This reticence was partly due to the political climate of the Soviet Union, where the image of strength and invincibility was highly valued, and the acknowledgement of such a tragic accident could be seen as a sign of weakness or failure. Moreover, the Soviet Union was on the eve of hosting the 1980 Olympics, a prestigious event meant to showcase the country's prowess and achievements. Acknowledging a star athlete's severe injury due to training for these games could tarnish the image the USSR sought to project to the world. Consequently, Mukina's accident and her condition were not widely publicized within the Soviet Union or internationally for some time. Behind the scenes, however, Mukina's injury did lead to introspection and changes within the Soviet gymnastics community. Coaches and officials were forced to reconsider training methods and the risks associated with pushing athletes to perform increasingly dangerous maneuvers. There was an increased emphasis on safety and the development of techniques to minimize the risk of injury, although these changes were gradual and largely kept out of the public eye. Despite these internal shifts, the Soviet Union's public acknowledgement of Mukina's injury and its aftermath was minimal. Mukina herself, after her injury, was supported by the state, receiving a pension and medical care, but her once promising career in gymnastics was over and she largely disappeared from the public view. It wasn't until the later years of the Soviet Union and after its dissolution that more open discussions about Mukina's accident and its implications for sports practices in the country began to emerge. Elena Mukina's tragic story eventually became a catalyst for discussions on athlete safety, the ethical responsibilities of coaches and sports organizations, and the pressures placed on young athletes to achieve at any cost. While the immediate Soviet reaction to her injury might have been characterized by silence and suppression, the long-term impact of her story has been a greater awareness of the need to balance ambition and care in the world of gymnastics and beyond. Where is she now? Well, tragically, Elena Mukina passed away on December 22, 2006, at the age of 46. Her death was a somber reminder of the risks and sacrifices associated with elite athletic competition, particularly in gymnastics, and the long-term consequences of severe sports injuries. Mukina's life after her injury was marked by significant challenges. Despite receiving care and a pension from the state, she lived with the severe physical and emotional repercussions of her paralysis. After her accident in 1979, Mukina's life changed dramatically. She went from being one of the world's top gymnasts, poised for Olympic glory, to facing a life of dependency and rehabilitation. Mukina's injury did not just end her gymnastics career. It required her to navigate a world not well equipped for those with severe disabilities, especially in the context of the Soviet Union at the time. Mukina was relatively private about her life post-accident, but in interviews, she occasionally shared insights into her struggles and her perspective on gymnastics and the circumstances that led to her injury. She expressed concerns about the pressures young athletes face and cautioned against pushing them beyond their limits. Her death brought a renewed focus on her life and career, sparking discussions about athlete welfare, the responsibility of coaches and sports organizations, and the importance of prioritizing safety alongside the pursuit of excellence. Elena Mukina's legacy extends beyond her achievements in gymnastics. It includes the lessons learned from her tragedy and the ongoing conversation about how best to protect and support athletes. Elena Mukina's story serves as a reminder of the risks and sacrifices associated with elite gymnastics. Despite her short-lived career and tragic fate, she remains an inspiration to many athletes and fans around the world. Her determination and courage in the face of adversity have left a lasting impact on the gymnastics community, fostering a greater emphasis on athlete welfare and safety.
Her remarkable talent, dedication, and the devastating outcome of her accident have shaped the sport's approach to safety and highlighted the need for responsible coaching and training practices. Elena Mukina's legacy lives on as a symbol of resilience and serves as a catalyst for ongoing efforts to prioritize the health and safety of gymnasts worldwide. Jalissa Gomez Jalissa Gomez was born on November 4, 1972, in San Antonio, Texas. She was known for her dedication and passion for gymnastics from a young age, qualities that propelled her into the spotlight of the gymnastics world as a promising young athlete. Gomez's early life was marked by a rapid ascent in the competitive gymnastics circuit, reflecting not just her talent, but also her work ethic and determination. From the beginning, Gomez showed a natural aptitude for gymnastics, and her family supported her pursuit of the sport. Her early training laid the foundation for her success, and she quickly made a name for herself at local and national competitions. Gomez was recognized for her powerful performances and technical skill, which set her apart from many of her peers. As she progressed in her gymnastics career, Gomez trained under several coaches, each contributing to her development as an athlete. She moved with her family to Houston to train with prominent coaches, a testament to her and her family's commitment to her gymnastics career. This move was pivotal, providing her with the opportunity to train at a higher level and with athletes who were at the top of the sport. Gomez's potential was evident early on, and she was seen as a rising star with the prospect of representing the United States at international competitions. Her dedication to the sport was matched by her rigorous training schedule, which is typical for elite gymnasts aiming for the highest levels of competition. Her commitment to the sport was evident early on, as she dedicated countless hours to training and perfecting her skills. Her family recognized her talent and supported her dream of becoming a top gymnast, a commitment that saw them making significant sacrifices to enable her pursuit of excellence in the sport. Gomez's early career in gymnastics was marked by rapid progress through the ranks. She was known for her work ethic, determination, and natural talent. Her abilities made her a standout gymnast at a young age, and she quickly began to compete in regional and national competitions. Her performance in these competitions garnered attention from coaches and the gymnastics community, highlighting her as one of the promising young talents in the United States. Gomez's potential seemed boundless, with many expecting her to become a key figure in international gymnastics competitions, including the Olympics. Though Jalissa Gomez's career was tragically short, she achieved significant milestones that hinted at a bright future in gymnastics. She competed in various national and international meets, where her performances earned her recognition and accolades. Gomez was particularly known for her prowess in vault, an event that showcased her athletic ability and technical skill. Her competitive spirit and dedication to improving her performance endeared her to fans and made her a respected competitor among her peers. The turning point in Gomez's life and career came in May 1988, prior to the Olympics, Jalissa Gomez traveled to Tokyo, Japan, to participate in the World Sports Fair. She competed in the all-around competition and successfully qualified for the vault finals. However, there were concerns about her performance on the Yurchenko vault, as she had been struggling with it for months leading up to the event. Observers, including her former coach Bella Caroli, teammates, and her present coach Al Fong, noticed her inconsistent technique and the difficulties she faced during practice sessions. Despite these concerns, Gomez's coaches believed she should continue training and competing the Yurchenko vault in order to achieve high scores. During the warm-up for the vault finals on May 5, 1988, Gomez continued practicing the Yurchenko vault. Unfortunately, on one of her practice runs, her foot slipped off the springboard, causing her to collide headfirst into the vaulting horse at a high speed. The impact of the accident instantly paralyzed her from the neck down. Tragically, she suffered further complications when she became disconnected from her ventilator at a Japanese hospital, resulting in severe brain damage and a subsequent coma. For three years, Gomez's family cared for her until she eventually succumbed to an infection and passed away in August 1991 in Houston. Gomez's accident had a profound impact on the sport of artistic gymnastics and led to significant changes. In 1989, 
the International Gymnastics Federation implemented measures to enhance vaulting safety by allowing the use of U-shaped springboard mats during competitions. These mats, traditionally used in practice, provide gymnasts with a greater margin of error during pre-flight. Today, the use of such mats is mandatory, and the 2006 Code of Points specifies that performing a Yurchenko-style vault without the safety mat results in an automatic score of zero. Furthermore, in 2001, the traditional vaulting horse was completely phased out and replaced by a larger and more stable vaulting table. This change aimed to provide gymnasts with additional safety during their performances. The accident and its aftermath were a devastating blow to Gomez, her family, and the gymnastics community worldwide. It sparked discussions about the safety of gymnasts and the risks associated with performing highly difficult and dangerous routines. Despite her injury, Gomez's fighting spirit remained strong. She and her family sought various treatments and rehabilitation options, hoping for a recovery that would allow her to regain some form of independence. Jalissa Gomez's battle ended on August 8, 1991, when she passed away due to complications related to her paralysis. Her death was a somber moment, reminding the sports world of the inherent risks in gymnastics and the need for increased safety measures and precautions. Gomez's legacy extends beyond her achievements on the gymnastics floor. Her story is a poignant reminder of both the physical risks athletes face in pursuit of excellence and the spirit of perseverance in the face of adversity. Following her accident, there was a renewed focus on athlete safety, with gymnastics organizations and coaches emphasizing the importance of safety measures and proper technique to prevent similar tragedies. Jalissa Gomez's life story, though marred by tragedy, continues to inspire and resonate within the gymnastics community and beyond. It serves as a reminder of the human spirit's resilience, the importance of supporting young athletes' dreams, and the critical need for ensuring their safety and well-being. Her legacy lives on, not only in the memories of those who knew her and followed her career, but also in the ongoing efforts to make gymnastics a safer sport for all athletes. Melanie Cole Melanie Coleman's story is a poignant reminder of the delicate balance between pursuing athletic excellence and the inherent risks involved in competitive sports. Born and raised in Milford, Connecticut, Melanie grew up in a close-knit family deeply involved in gymnastics. From a young age, she demonstrated not just a talent for the sport, but a passion that would define her life's trajectory. Melanie's journey in gymnastics began in childhood, inspired by her siblings and nurtured by her family's support. Gymnastics was more than a sport for the Coleman family. It was a way of life that brought them together and instilled values of discipline, hard work, and perseverance in the children. Melanie trained at New Era Gymnastics, where she honed her skills and developed a work ethic that would accompany her throughout her career. By the time she attended Jonathan Law High School, Melanie had already made a name for herself in the gymnastics community. Her high school years were marked by significant achievements, including being named a captain of the gymnastics team. Melanie's leadership on and off the mat was evident through her dedication to her team and her ability to inspire her peers. Her talent and hard work culminated in her earning All-State Gymnastics honors, showcasing her as one of the top gymnasts in Connecticut. Melanie's success in high school gymnastics paved the way for her collegiate career at Southern Connecticut State University. She chose Southern Connecticut State University not only for its competitive gymnastics program, but also for its nursing program, reflecting her desire to help others and pursue a career in healthcare. Melanie exemplified the true spirit of a student athlete, excelling in both her academic and athletic endeavors. Her dedication to gymnastics continued to shine through her participation in the university's team, where she was a valued member and continued to push herself and her teammates to excel. In addition to her athletic achievements, Melanie stood out academically. She was recognized as a Women's Collegiate Gymnastics Association Scholastic All-American, an honor that underscored her commitment to her studies and her ability to balance the rigorous demands of being a student athlete. Melanie's pursuit of a nursing degree was driven by her compassionate nature and her desire to make a positive impact on the lives of others. On November 8, 2019, Melanie's life took a tragic turn. 
During a routine practice session on the uneven bars at New Era Gymnastics, she sustained a severe spinal injury. The accident was a stark reminder of the risks gymnasts face every time they perform, even during practice. Despite the immediate response and efforts to save her, Melanie succumbed to her injuries two days later, on November 10, 2019. Her passing was a devastating blow to her family, friends, teammates, and the broader gymnastics community. Melanie Coleman's death brought to light the inherent dangers of gymnastics, a sport that demands perfection and pushes the limits of physical capability. Her accident sparked conversations within the gymnastics community about safety protocols, training methods, and the support systems in place for gymnasts. While gymnastics is a sport celebrated for its beauty and athleticism, Melanie's story is a sobering reminder of the physical toll it can take and the need for vigilance regarding athlete safety. Beyond the discussions about safety in gymnastics, Melanie's legacy is also defined by her spirit, resilience, and the positive impact she had on those around her. In the wake of her passing, the Southern Connecticut State University community and gymnasts nationwide came together to honor her memory and support one another through a period of immense grief. Tributes poured in, highlighting her kindness, work ethic, and the indelible mark she left on the sport and the people in her life. Melanie Coleman's life, though tragically short, was marked by remarkable achievements and a legacy of inspiration. As a gymnast, she pursued excellence with determination and grace. As a student and aspiring nurse, she embodied the values of compassion and service to others. And as a person, she left an enduring impact on everyone she encountered. In remembering Melanie, those who knew her and the gymnastics community at large are reminded of the joy she found in the sport and the importance of cherishing every moment. Her story continues to inspire young gymnasts to pursue their dreams with passion and dedication, while also emphasizing the critical importance of safety in the sport they love. Melanie Coleman's life and career, culminating in her untimely death, serve as a powerful narrative about the pursuit of athletic excellence, the risks associated with high-level competition, and the profound loss felt by a community when a beloved athlete's life is cut short. Through her accomplishments, her impact on others, and the legacy she leaves behind, Melanie's story will continue to resonate, reminding us all of the human spirit's resilience and the preciousness of life. Simone Biles Simone Biles' story is quite different from every other story we've been talking about because she's still alive and healthy, but it shows how traumatic it can be being a gymnast. Simone Biles, born on March 14, 1997 in Columbus, Ohio, has emerged as one of the most decorated gymnasts in history. Her early life laid the foundation for a career that would eventually be filled with unparalleled achievements in the sport of gymnastics. However, her journey to the top was not without its challenges, marked by personal adversity and a resilient overcoming of obstacles. Biles was born to parents who struggled with substance abuse, leading to her and her siblings being placed in foster care. When Simone was six years old, she and her younger sister were adopted by their maternal grandfather, Ron Biles, and his wife Nellie, who moved them to the suburban area of Spring, Texas. This change in guardianship provided Simone with a stable and supportive home environment, which played a crucial role in her future gymnastics success. Simone's introduction to gymnastics came somewhat serendipitously at the age of six during a daycare field trip to Bannon's Gymnastics, where she was captivated by the gymnasts practicing. Noticing her natural ability, the coaches suggested she continue with gymnastics. Simone's adoptive parents supported her passion, and she soon began participating in gymnastics classes, quickly demonstrating a prodigious talent for the sport. Under the guidance of her early coaches, Amy Borman among them, Simone began her ascent in the gymnastics world. Her raw talent, combined with a rigorous training regimen, saw her making rapid progress. Biles possessed a rare combination of power, agility, and air awareness, which set her apart from her peers even at a young age. Simone's early career in gymnastics was characterized by her dominance in junior competitions. By the age of 14, she was competing at the elite level, showcasing skills that belied her age. Her performance at the junior level hinted at the historic career that was to follow, 
marked by her powerful tumbling passes and a fearlessness in attempting and mastering complex skills. Despite her early success, Simone faced challenges typical of elite athletes, including the pressure to perform, the physical strain of training, and balancing her sporting commitments with her education. Yet, her family's support, particularly from her adoptive parents, provided her with the stability and encouragement she needed to pursue her dreams. In 2006 Rio de Janeiro Olympics, Biles won four gold medals, team all-around vault and floor exercise, and a bronze on the balance beam. Her performance in Rio made her an international superstar and showcased her dominance in the sport. Also in 2020 Tokyo Olympics, but held in 2021 due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Biles won a silver medal with Team USA and a bronze on the balance beam. Her decision to prioritize her well-being was widely praised and brought attention to the importance of mental health in sports. Biles has won 25 World Championship medals, making her the most decorated gymnast in the history of World Championships. Of these, 19 are gold medals. Her World Championship successes span several years and include individual titles in the all-around, vault, floor exercise, and balance beam, as well as team titles with Team USA. Biles has won multiple U.S. national championships, showcasing her dominance on the national stage. Her titles span across the all-around, as well as individual events, further cementing her status as the premier American gymnast of her generation. Over the years, Biles has dealt with various injuries, which are almost inevitable in a sport as physically demanding as gymnastics. These have included a kidney stone discovered just before the start of the 2018 World Championships, yet she still went on to compete and win medals. Injuries such as these are a testament to her resilience and dedication to the sport. Biles has also taken proactive steps to manage her physical health, including opting out of competitions or specific events to prioritize her recovery. This approach reflects a broader shift within elite athletics towards prioritizing athletes' long-term health and well-being over immediate competition results. One of the most significant moments in Biles's career related to her well-being came during the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, held in 2021. Biles withdrew from several events, including the individual all-around competition, to focus on her mental health. She cited experiencing a case of the twisties, a phenomenon where gymnasts lose their sense of orientation in the air, which can be incredibly dangerous given the complexity of the skills they perform. This decision brought widespread attention to the importance of mental health in sports, with Biles receiving both support and criticism. Her choice to prioritize her safety and mental health over competition was a pivotal moment in sports history, highlighting the pressures faced by elite athletes and the importance of addressing mental health with the same seriousness as physical health. While Simone Biles has taken breaks from competition since the Tokyo Olympics, she has not officially announced her retirement from gymnastics as of April 2023. Biles has spoken about the importance of taking time for herself, reflecting on her future in the sport, and considering her overall well-being. Regardless of her decision on continuing her gymnastics career, Biles's legacy is secure. She has not only pushed the boundaries of the sport with her incredible skill and athleticism, but has also played a crucial role in advocating for athletes' mental health and safety. Her impact extends beyond her medal count, influencing the next generation of gymnasts and changing how athlete well-being is approached in competitive sports. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next one.